In geometric algebra, we do algebra on geometric objects. So to start off our journey in discovering geometric algebra, the first thing we need to determine is this. What is the simplest geometric object that we can do algebra with? Trying to answer this question will lead us to the idea of a vector. In this video, we are going to get our first understanding of what a vector is and why we care about them. This video is a part of From Zero to Geo, a series where we formulate geometric algebra, an incredibly powerful branch of mathematics, from the ground up. So what is the simplest geometric object? I feel like you can't go wrong with points. However, how could you do algebra with points? For example, if we had another point over here, how would you add these two points? How would you multiply them? Just looking at this picture, it doesn't seem too clear how you could do this. Well, here's something we can try. Let's draw some axes. Then the coordinates of the first point are negative 1, 0, and the coordinates of the second point are 3, 2. Then to add them, we could just try adding the corresponding coordinates. When we do this, we get this point here. However, there's an issue with doing this. What if we drew our axes here instead? Then the coordinates of these two points are negative 2, 0, and 2, 2. And when we add them by adding the corresponding coordinates again, we get 0, 2. When we plot this point, we see that it is a different point than what we got before. In general, we see that as we move the axes around, while our starting points don't move, the result of adding the coordinates of the two points does move. The issue is, the position of the axes is completely arbitrary. Thus, it seems that this way of adding points won't work out. To fix this, many people just pick one set of axes and always use it. However, we're going to do something a little different. If the way we do algebra with points depends on our choice of axes, why don't we make this choice more explicit? Notice that our choice of axes singles out a single point in space, the origin of our coordinate system. Thus, we could try to find some geometric object that incorporates the origin. A simple object that does this would be the arrow going from the origin to a point. Thus, to represent points in space, we can just single out a single point to be our origin, and then we can represent any other point with arrows. The nice thing about this is that we don't need to worry about our axes anymore. In fact, we could just forget about points entirely and only use these arrows. Since we don't even care about points anymore, we could look at any arrows, not just arrows starting at the origin. We call these arrows vectors. It turns out that vectors are much more useful and easier to use than points, so we are going to be using vectors as our fundamental geometric object. Thus, to answer our initial question, the simplest geometric object that we will do algebra with is vectors, not points. One important thing to note is that there are actually many other ways to think about vectors, and we will cover several of them in the future. So while we are currently going to be talking about vectors as arrows, don't assume that that is all that vectors are. But for the time being, we will assume that vectors are just arrows. Now, some of you may be thinking, Hey, I know about vectors. Do I really need to learn about vectors again? If this describes you, you can probably skip this first chapter and start at the chapter about multivectors. However, make sure you understand the following. You need to understand the interpretation of vectors as arrows, lists of numbers, and as elements of an abstract linear space. For each of these interpretations, you need to understand how to add vectors, multiply them by scalars, and find their length. In addition to all of this, you need to understand concepts like subspaces, linear dependence, span, and bases. I expect that a decent number of you have used vectors but haven't learned about these concepts. If that's the case, you could skip the next few videos and then jump back in part way through chapter 1. I'll put exactly where you should jump depending on your knowledge in the description of this video. Anyway, for those who aren't going to be skipping anything, let's go back to talking about vectors. There are two main properties of a vector, its length and its orientation. 
The length of a vector is represented by a number. The length is also given other more fancy names as well, such as magnitude or norm. Changing the length is called scaling the vector. The orientation of a vector is the direction it is pointing. Changing the orientation of a vector is just rotating the vector. One important thing about vectors is that moving a vector around without scaling or rotating it does not make it a different vector. Vectors care only about their length and orientation and do not care at all about their position. Before we move on, let's do an exercise to make sure you understand everything so far. Here are a bunch of vectors. Let's ask three questions. Which of these vectors have the same length? Which of these vectors have the same orientation? And finally, which of these vectors are equal? Please pause the video and answer these questions before continuing. Let's solve these questions in order. First, which of these vectors have the same length? We can see that there are three different lengths of vectors here. First, there are these small ones. Second, there are these that are a bit bigger. Finally, there are two here that are the biggest. Next, which of these vectors have the same orientation? First, there are these two vectors pointing to the right. There are also these two vectors pointing down and to the right. This one here pointing up and to the left is by itself. Now at this point, with the three remaining vectors, I will admit that I gave you something that is a bit tricky. All of these vectors are parallel, so it would seem that they all have the same orientation. However, notice that the vector on the bottom right is pointing down and to the left, whereas the other two are pointing up and to the right. Thus, these two vectors have the same orientation, and the vector on the bottom right does not share its orientation with any of the other vectors. Finally, which of these vectors are equal? This can be solved by looking back at the previous answers and seeing which vectors have the same length and orientation. If we do this, we see that only these two vectors are equal. Before we move on, I want to note that while I have been showing vectors in two dimensions, they are not limited to two dimensions. Here is a vector in three-dimensional space. I have been showing vectors in two dimensions because vectors are easier to draw and think about in two dimensions. In fact, even though we can't comprehend it visually, we can also have vectors in higher dimensional spaces as well, which I'll explain in more detail later. We can also have vectors in one dimensional space as well, where they can only be on a line. This case isn't too interesting, but it's still an important thing to keep in mind. For now, I will continue to show vectors in two dimensional space. But keep in mind that unless I say otherwise, what I'm talking about works in any number of dimensions. Now, with numbers, we oftentimes use letters to describe them. This is useful because we can then start writing formulas with letters, and we don't have to worry about what specific numbers are being used. We can do the same thing with vectors. To distinguish between numbers and vectors, all vectors will have this little arrow above them. Instead of using this arrow, some people write the vector in a bold font. The bold font doesn't look too good in these videos, so I'll use the arrow. Anyway, using letters to represent vectors is useful for the same reason that it is useful for numbers. There is also the additional benefit that vectors are kind of hard to write in equations, so by changing to letters, the equations are easier to write and read. At this point, we can't do much with vectors without defining operations that we can do on these vectors. In the next few videos, we will discuss three of the basic operations that you can do with vectors. Finding the length of a vector, changing the length of a vector, or scaling, and adding two vectors together. Don't worry about how all of these operations work at the moment. I'll describe them in more detail later. You might notice a few things missing from this list of operations. I said earlier that the two main properties of a vector are its length and its orientation. The length is present here, but the orientation is not. Talking about the orientation of a vector and how to rotate a vector is quite complicated. We will get there eventually, 
but a lot of other material is required first. You might also notice that I mentioned that we can add vectors, but what about multiplying them? This is possible as well, but it is also more complicated than it might seem. For now, the three operations shown here are simple and you can do quite a bit with them, so we will explore them in the next few videos. After describing these operations, we'll go back to exploring how to use vectors to represent points in space. I would like to give a special shout out to Richard Penner for supporting me on Patreon. I don't plan on doing this big of a shout out in the future for supporters, but I thought Richard deserved this for being the first and currently only person to buy my highest tier.